Hi guys, last class we learned all about vegetables. We talked about the importance of eating lots of different colors to give your body lots of different vitamins and how important each vitamin is for our body and does a specific job that the others cannot do. Well, our next group we'll be talking about today also plays an important job for your body that no other, other food group can do. Your first clue for this food group is it gives your body the most energy of any other group. It gives your body energy to run and play at recess or maybe at a football or basketball game. It also gives your brain the energy it needs to function and work properly. Any guesses? I have a couple of examples here with me today. I have wheat, oats, rice, corn, and barley. What group does this belong in? They belong in the grain group and that's the group we're going to be talking about today. Now, before we get started, I'd like to show you two different types of bread. Now, obviously, bread belongs in the grain group. That's a pretty typical um, food that you think of when you think of the grain group. One is an example. One example is white bread and the other is whole wheat grain bread. What is the difference between these two pieces of bread? Probably the first thing you're thinking is color. Maybe you prefer the taste of one over the other. Maybe you like white bread in some things and wheat bread for maybe toast or different types of things. If you remember from our lesson last year, we talked about how wheat bread is healthier than white bread. And we'll be talking about why more today. But if you look a little closer at these pieces of bread, what is similar about them? Besides the shape and the color differences, what about what's similar? Do you see the tiny little holes in that bread? Any guesses what that's from? We're going to be talking about this today. So those tiny little holes in the bread are formed by carbon dioxide, and this reaction takes place from yeast. If you've ever made bread before, you probably know about yeast and see the reaction that it does. It takes a, a batter of bread and grows it to make it double in size. And it forms these tiny bubbles from carbon dioxide, which is also the little bubbles that are in your soda that you like to drink. Pretty cool, right? Let me show you an experiment with this yeast. We can see it growing in real time form. For our experiment today, we will be looking at the growth of yeast. Yeast is called a leavening agent. That means it helps something to leaven or become lighter and fluffier. So I have this bottle here with me. I'm going to fill it most of the way with just some plain clean water from the sink. This is an experiment you could do at home and you probably already have the, the objects that you need to create this experiment at home and on your own time. So I filled my cup with about half a cup or half of the way up filled with water. And you want to have a narrow neck bottle, something that a balloon can fit over. Next, we're going to add some yeast. There's lots of different types of yeast that you can buy at the store. Any type will work perfect for this experiment. And then we need to give something for the yeast to eat. It needs to have something to create that carbon dioxide that we talked about. So I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. And sugar is what's going to give the yeast the food that it needs to react and cause our reaction. I'm gonna switch that around so it can start working. You can see that it's already starting to foam up and react. See those yeast particles are starting to get fluffier and the sugar is already starting to make that reaction occur. So now I'm going to take a balloon and stretch it over the top of my bottle. And you want to have your balloon top facing about in the center of that balloon. And what this balloon is going to start inflating by is the reaction that is caused by the sugar and the yeast. Now this takes a little bit of time. I can already start to feel a little bit of pressure forming in the balloon. Let's return when we start to see more of a reaction. You can see as the yeast grew, 
the balloon also grew and began to inflate. The reason for this, a chemical reaction was taking place. As the yeast was eating the sugar, we were able to see carbon dioxide releasing, causing that balloon to inflate. Similar to how bread rises in the oven. Those tiny little bubbles that form make the bread soft, light, and delicate. What do you think happens if you put too much yeast in bread? It would be very light, right? But unfortunately, it wouldn't have the stability to hold that structure. So when you're making bread, an important ingredient is to add salt. A little bit of salt is able to inhibit the yeast from growing too big and making too big of bubbles that cannot hold the structure. And then you would have bread that would sink and be gummy in the middle. Very interesting. This is a great experiment you can do at home and you can practice different things. An example would be maybe to try different types of sugar, seeing if brown sugar, honey, powdered sugar, sugar would grow the yeast at different rates. Maybe try adding salt to the yeast and see if you notice a difference in the growth and the texture. Today, as we talk about the grain group, keep this in mind. We will be talking about the different types of grains that belong in the grain group and why you should eat in certain types. So I'm sure you're very familiar with the two types of bread we talked about, wheat and white bread, and which is the healthier choice, the wheat bread, right? If you remember from last year, I brought a diagram that looks like this. Remember, this is a blown up version of what a small piece of wheat would look like. Wheat has three parts. It has the endosperm, the bran, and the germ. Now, not this germ does not have bacteria like you might first think when you hear the word germ. Besides having bacteria, what this has is all of the minerals, all the vitamins, and that's what makes this grain healthy for your bodies. Your body gets a lot of nutrients from the bran and the germ, making a whole grain a great food for your body to grow and have the vitamins it needs to be strong and healthy. Now, what do you think happens if we remove the bran and we remove, remove the germ and we're only left with the endosperm? This takes away all the nutrients from the grain. And if you guess, this is how white flour is made that makes this white bread. So now when you look at the wheat bread and the white bread, you have a better understanding why this one is healthier. It has the whole grain intact when the flour was made to make this type, of, this type of bread, making it much more nutritious for your body. Now maybe wheat bread isn't your favorite and you prefer the taste of white bread. Of course, that's perfectly fine. The USDA recommends that you make half of your grains whole. So if you are supposed to have six ounces of grain a day, you should make three of those whole grain. That could be a whole grain piece of toast. It could be whole grain pasta for dinner and maybe brown rice with your lunch. That would still leave three refined grains that you can be eating. This could be maybe you have white crackers with your snack. You could have maybe some cereal that has a refined grain. And then for your last, you could have maybe a tortilla for a snack. So then you're getting three whole grains and three refined grains. Now, have you ever heard of the term enriched grain? This is yet another category that fits in this group. Whole grains are our healthiest grains and enriched grains are grains that have the bran and the germ removed, but they add some of the nutrients back into the endosperm when making the flour which is why it's enriched. They make it rich with nutrients. Do you think this is healthier than whole grain? No, of course not. We know that food is healthiest in its whole form, but an enriched grain does have some nutrients like vitamins added back into it. You can find if a grain is enriched, refined, or whole by looking on the food label. We're going to practice looking at a few food labels today. The food label can be found on the side or the back of a box. If you look closely, you can see there's lots of numbers and it looks a little bit confusing when you first look at it. We're gonna be focusing down at the bottom underneath the food label where it says ingredients, right down here. The ingredient list tells you all the ingredients that are added into that product. So you can find an ingredient list on cereal, on granola bars, even in popcorn, you can find an ingredient list. So we're going to practice looking at these. Let's look at our first food label. Tell me which type of grain you think this food label has. 
Any guesses what food label that went to? That was the food label of a white tortilla. Surely you've seen these before. If not eating them in the cafeteria, you possibly eat them at home with your family. Now on the back, we find the food label just like we talked about. And right below, we're able to see the ingredient list, which is what you just saw as a class. You notice the very first ingredient said bleached wheat flour. Is this a whole grain? What do you think? Wheat flour alone is not a whole grain unless it says whole wheat or 100% whole before the term wheat. It says right after um, enriched with niacin, reduced iron, thiamine, and mononitrite. So we can see that it's enriched, which means that those minerals and vitamins were added back into the endosperm grain, meaning that the bran and the germ were missing from that um, grain. All right, let's see how you do on our next one. Food label number two, how'd you do? Any guesses what food group this was? This food was Ritz crackers. And you notice on the ingredient list, right under the food label, the first ingredient says un unbleached enriched flour. So which group would this be? The enriched group, right? And it has a whole list of vitamins that are added back into these Ritz crackers. So we know that it was the endosperm of the flour and there were vitamins added back into it. All right, number three, let's see how you do. This one was a tricky one. Was the first ingredient whole grains or refined or enriched grains? It was not. The first ingredient was peanuts, and it actually was to a granola bar. So you notice the first ingredients were peanuts, sugar, and corn syrup, and then whole grain oats. So we know there are whole grains in this bar, but is it our healthiest choice? No, there's more sugar and more corn syrup in these granola bars than there is oats. We know this because our food label ingredient list, the first ingredient is the very most um, ingredient and the last ingredient on the list is the very littlest ingredient. So if corn syrup comes before oats, we know there is more corn syrup than oats in this product and it's not our healthiest choice. All right, last food label, let's check it out. Finally, we see a whole grain. The first ingredient on this list was 100% whole wheat, meaning it was a whole grain product and the first ingredient was the whole grain in the product. And this was, if you guess wheat bread, you're correct. This was a food label for wheat bread. So hopefully you see how very, very beneficial the food label can be. You can use the ingredient list to see what foods, what um, ingredients are in the foods that you're eating and if they are whole grains, refined, or enriched grains. And our goal is to make half of our grains whole grains. Remember our hand signal where we have five fingers we put together and our one single finger to pretend like we're buttering bread to remember six ounces of grain a day and three of those should hopefully be from whole grain sources. Teach your family the importance of eating whole grains. Whole grains give a lot of benefit and a lot of nutrition to your body to make you strong and healthy and give you the energy that you need for your body to grow and develop and your brain to think clearly. Today we're going to practice making a healthy recipe made from whole grains and I have a special guest to help me with this recipe today. So today for our whole grain snack, I wanted to show you how simple it was. So I have my five-year-old here with me. What's your name? Beckett. Beckett. And he is going to help us make our snack today and show you how simple it really is and very inexpensive. So all you need to make this recipe is a brown paper sack like you would take to school for lunch, um, some type of tape, you'll just need a, few, a little tiny bit, and then some uh, popcorn kernels. All right. Yeah, tell them, tell them how to do it. So you get three scoops of this. Mm -hmm. And put it in the bag. Very good. How many scoops was that? Three. Three scoops. And then you're just going to fold over your bag. 
like this and put a piece of tape. Beth, you want to put the tape on? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Put the tape right here. Okay. Very good. Just like that. And then you're going to put it in the microwave. And Beckett's going to help us with something else. So we're going to set the timer for two minutes. How long, Beckett? Two. Two minutes. All right, Beckett, can you tell the class when is your favorite time to eat popcorn? Mm, on Monday and Tuesday. On Monday and Tuesday? Nice. Why Monday and Tuesday? Because that's what... When those cold days on Monday and Tuesday, I just, I know that it's sometimes kind of warm, so I just eat it. Nice. So he likes to eat popcorn on cold days. My favorite time to eat popcorn is when I'm watching a movie. Do you like to do that too? Yeah? Maybe you could tell the class, what is your favorite movie to watch? Mm, superheroes. Superhero movies? Do you like to eat popcorn when you watch superhero movies? Yeah? Very good. So today we're making a healthy popcorn, so we're not adding lots of butter and salt, which is typically what they put on popcorn, especially at like movie theaters. So, Becky, what's something you like to put on your popcorn to give it flavor? Mm, Sour Patch Kids. Oh, Sour Patch Kids. There's another option, not a healthy one. What about a healthy thing you could put on your popcorn? Mm. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Good. Yeah, cinnamon's a healthy snack that you could put on your popcorn. You could also do like chili powder or oregano or black pepper is really tasty. That's a yummy one too, huh? We've tried lots of different spices. So this is something you could experiment with as well. After you make this popcorn, um, you can just add some spices to it and it will give it lots of flavor without adding all the unhealthiness. Um, if you do prefer butter and salt, of course that's fine to add that to your popcorn, but you just want to do not as much because remember when you're adding lots of unhealthy things to a healthy food, it makes it less healthy and the nutrients aren't as impactful as if you didn't have all that extra added stuff to it. So our popcorn has seven seconds left and we'll open it up and maybe Beckett give it a try. Do you could try it, Beckett? Yeah? Okay. All right, I'll shake up my bag. And how about we cut it open? Oh man, look at that delicious popcorn. Doesn't that look yummy? Some cinnamon. All right, we're gonna sprinkle some cinnamon on it. There's lots of other spices you could add or you can just eat it plain. I like to eat it plain. All right, let's sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon in there. Sure, yeah, tell them. I like to eat it how? When there's like some candy in it? Yeah, sometimes adding a little bit of candy in there to make it sweet. All right, so I added some cinnamon in there. Shook it up. All right, Beckett, can you taste it and tell us how it tastes? Good. Is it hot? <laughs> a little bit hot? Good, so hopefully Beckett gave you some good advice and you saw how simple and easy this healthy snack was. And you can try it at home and experiment with all kinds of different spices. Up next, we'll talk about what our exercise will be for the day to get outside, get moving, and get your body healthy and strong. Today for your outdoor activity, you'll be playing grain cereal tag. This, is, this game is very similar to tag. The teacher will choose one person to be it. The class will go out and have a perimeter that they must stay in between. The person that is it tries to tag as many people as they can. If you get tagged, you can become untagged and rejoin the game if you call out a type of cereal. Now remember to call out unique types of cereal. We don't want anyone to repeat it. For instance, if I'm running and I get tagged, I can yell out cornflakes and then I'm back in the game. The next person that gets tagged cannot yell out cornflakes. They have to yell out a different type of cereal. Remember, cereal belongs in the grain group and there's definitely healthier cereals you can be eating. Focus on eating whole grains this month and I will see you next time. Goodbye.